Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. It's important that we keep our small businesses abreast of, of all the needs during this COVID environment. Before we get started, I just want to do a few housekeeping things. Uh, first of all, I want you to know that today's presentation, the chat box is your friend. If there's a question, put it in the chat box. We will immediately handle your question because it may be on a particular slide and we want to make sure you understand it. Make sure you feel okay to ask whatever questions. Uh, today, I'm joined by Jerry Garcia and Anivis Wynn, uh, Steve Fontan Fontana from the Economic Development Department, and of course, our Health Director, Maritza Bond. Before we get started, I'd like to just uh, give you a bit of information. Um, if you're not familiar with the Small Business Development Center, I think you should be uh, uh, familiar with it because that's where you go if you're interested in applying for PPP. PPP will be open through March and it is not driven on credit. It is driven on the number of employees that you have. And on February 9th, they are having webinar uh, for independent contractors and sole proprietors without employees. And on the 11th, they're doing a webinar on sm with small businesses, targeted towards small businesses that have employees. So please sign up to attend those webinars if you're still interested in applying for the PPP. They will walk you through the allowable expenses, who's eligible, how much you're eligible for, the documents required, and uh, most importantly, the forgiveness enhancements. And with that said, one last thing, the Small Business Resource Center for the City of New Haven, we've also uh, signed an agreement where we are offering back office services. So if you are in need of back office services, please feel free to, contract the, to contact the Small Business Resource Center. And with those points, I'd like to turn it over to Maritza Bond, our, the City of New Haven's Health Director. Thank you, Maritza, and welcome. Thank you, Kathy and Gerald, for um, coordinating this um, vital meeting. It's so important to keep each of you abreast. I want to thank all of our small businesses. Um, I am um, wishing you much success. Um, today is my goal to provide you um, our latest update um, so that we can ensure as Kathy indicated, that um, as we are ramping up our vaccination um, efforts, that you have all the information that's needed so that you can make sure that um, you yourselves and your employees can safely um, register and get vaccinated. And so what I wanted to do is just to highlight um, a little bit about our vaccination um, launch, um, which occurred in under phase 1B. So currently our efforts have been around um, ensuring that um, we are vaccinating in different phases. Um, those were created, um, hold on one second. Um, I need to um, escape from this, give me one moment. I wanted to provide um, some vaccine information first before um, we um, went in too much into the enrollment process. So I apologize um, about that. So let me just um, reshare my screen. So before we go into the enrollment, I wanted to highlight a little bit about our vaccination um, efforts. And so I will um, maneuver between two, two PowerPoints. So I, I apologize about that. Um, my my uh, system is acting up just a little bit, technology. Um, I just wanna change the display. Can everyone see? I wanna make sure that it's, okay. Can everyone see the big screen? I hopefully you can. Yeah. So this information is um, just a quick disclaimer as, as of relative as of today, um, and it's always um, subject to change. One of the things that we wanted to talk about in regards to the vaccination rollout is that um, safety is um, the top priority um, for the vaccine manufacturers and for the city as a whole to make sure that 
we are providing the most latest information, um, scientific information, so that individuals can have the autonomy to make the right decisions that are best um, fit for an individual's choice. Um, COVID-19 um, vaccines uh, certainly will not give individuals um, COVID-19 um, virus. And so we've been making sure that we um, illustrate and provide messaging around ensuring that individuals um, are not um, are being um, vaccinated and that knowing that the vaccine will not give you the actual virus is not a live vaccine. And so the vaccine will also not cause you to test positive on a COVID-19 viral test. I can certainly attest to that because I'm still getting tested on a routine basis, um, just out of abundance of precaution. And I've been vaccinated and my test results were able to come back negative. So it's good to know that the science um, and the clinical trials information that came out of those clinical trials are accurate. People who have previously been infected um, may still benefit from getting vaccinated. Um, so we, we know that there's uh, different variants that have been introduced into our country and our state and in our city. And so we want to make sure that individuals know that if you've previously had COVID, you still may benefit from getting vaccinated. We just want to make sure that there's a duration of time, um, about, about 90 days um, before considering to be um, vaccinating, vaccinated. And getting vaccinated can also help prevent getting sick with COVID-19. Um, both of the vaccines are both 94 and 95 percent effective. And so individuals can certainly be able to ensure that um, um, you have those protective factors, but you still want to make sure that you are following the necessary precautions. Getting vaccinated, so there's still a 5%, 6% chance that you can get the virus. It can lessen the symptoms of COVID-19 um, should you um, end up getting um, testing positive um, um, due to exposure. And we know that the vaccine has been proven to protect people around you. So particularly those individuals that have pre-existing conditions um, that can get, um, get severe reactions um, and illness from the COVID-19 virus, being um, vaccinated really enables us to build a herd immunity. We are trying to get to that goal. The more people that get vaccinated can assist. We know that historically um, vaccines has even eradicated um, certain diseases and because we have built herd immunity. And so it's so critical um, and so critical in particular now um, in addressing and mitigating and controlling this pandemic. We know that the two vaccines have been also approved by the Center for um, the FDA and the Emergency Use Authorization. And so we want to make sure that um, you understand that the vaccines that have been approved and are being utilized have been and are continue to be monitored by the Center for Disease Control and the Federal Drug Administration. What you see in front of you is the different rollout of the different phases. Early Late December, we rolled out and targeted healthcare workers. Um, long-term care facilities, medical first responders. We're currently responding to 75 and over and getting ready to roll out those that are 65 to 74. Um, what I, uh, We will then later transition to frontline essential workers. This is where small businesses will be critical um, in making sure that their employees um, are then, uh, that you as employers register yourselves and your employees to get vaccinated. And we'll talk about a lot about that so that we can make sure that um, you understand the process and we, um, we're going to illustrate the process for the rollout momentarily. What's important to know is that if you have individual employees now that are eligible, they, don't, they do not have to wait until um, employers are able to upload them into the roster. So if you have any employees that are 75 and over or 65 and 74, they will be able to register um, through the different four ways um, that we're registering individuals in our city, which, um, which I'll hi highlight momentarily on um, the different ways that people can register. So just to talk a little bit about the two different vaccines, and then we'll transition into um, the vaccine administration management system that we really want to highlight today. Um, I wanted to make sure that um, we, we uh, indicate that the, the messenger RNA vaccines um, may produce side effects after getting vaccinated. The clinical trials, including what we've been seeing for those of us that have been vaccinated, is that the side effects may include fever, headache, and muscle aches, and some fatigue. But these were the three primary um, exam um, examples out of the clinical trials of the two Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that came out of those eight-week clinical trial studies. Um, these were the three main um, side effects. 
um, just to sort of highlight the two distinct and distinguished between Pfizer and Moderna, they're very much alike, which means that they create antibodies to protect us from getting COVID. Um, and the only real major differences, it's the storage and the dosage um, frequency. So for storage, Moderna can be refrigerated for up to 30 days, whereas the Pfizer vaccine has to be maintained frozen at all times. The dosage is also different. Um, the Moderna vaccine is two doses, 28 days apart, and then two um, Pfizer vaccine is two doses, 21 days apart. But the efficacy, if, as you see in front of you, are really similar where the efficacy is 94% for Moderna and 95% for the Pfizer vaccine. This is really quickly the, the results of the, of the clinical trials for both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. Um, Pfizer vaccine had over 43 indiv um, individuals enrolled with uh, over 150 clinical um, sites in six countries and 39 U.S. states, where Moderna had 30,000 enrolled, 89 clinical sites and 32 U.S. states. And if you look at the ratio and ethnic distribution, this is the breakdown of different distribution among different populations. And we were really pleased that um, historically there's been um, low percentages of both black and brown communities registering for clinical trials and being part of clinical trials. And we saw an increase in both African and Hispanic uh, Latino communities um, um, since historic uh, the historic makeup. If you look at the age and sex breakdown, it's, it was almost equal between the two and, um, and the percentages of 65 and over were also almost equal between the two clinical trials. Um, just some common um, um, side effects that we're seeing um, and that are very common is that you may get an injection. Um, at the site of the injection, you may get some so slight pain, swelling, tenderness, and redness. You may feel tiredness and fatigue, a headache, muscle pain, chills, joint pain, fever, nausea and vi um, vomiting, feeling unwell, and swollen lymph nodes. I can tell you that after I received my second dose, um, I felt most of the side effects, except my lymph nodes were not swollen, but I certainly felt um, the side of um, the pain at the site of injection, um, tiredness, fatigue. The first dose, I only felt a slight pain at the site of injection at 24 hours later. Um, and then 24 hours later of getting the second dose, I felt these um, different side effects. One of the things that um, based on with some of the um, things that we're seeing with our staff and with community members getting vaccinated, we want individuals to pre-plan and be able to support your employees um, after they get their vaccine um, the next day. So doing a staggering schedule of your employees getting vaccinated will be great so that um, you're not out of commission and running your businesses. Um, one of the things that um, we um, that we, that our team struggled with is that we all got vaccinated and then many of us we had the side effects and we tried to work through it. Um, and that's definitely not wise. Um, we, people really need to let their bodies just be able to allow the vaccination um, process to go through the system. And having these side effects actually means that the vaccine is working and that your body is building and reacting to the, um, and building those antibodies against the, against the virus. So it's actually good to get some of these side effects. So now I wanna transition a little bit um, into the vaccination phase 1B um, processes, um, but I wanna stop there for a moment, um, um, Kathy and Gerald, to see if anyone has any questions at this time. You're on mute, Kathy. Any questions at this time? Remember, throughout the presentation, the chat box is your friend. There aren't any questions. So what I want to transition to, and, and listen, I want to just make a disclaimer that no question is a bad question. Every question is a good question. So um, feel free, and I can always share also my email afterwards, or you can email Kathy afterwards, and we can certainly provide um, offline support if you need it. So I want to transition now into the vaccine rollout for business enrollment. And so um, as indicated, we are transitioning um, out of 75 years and um, age and older. We're in the process of um, transitioning into that. We'll be doing 65 and over in the next coming weeks. 
And then frontline essential workers will be there um, shortly thereafter. And so we want to make sure that our small businesses and our businesses alike are fully aware of um, are fully aware of the different categories of the way that the governor um, has um, governor's advisory committee have set out the um, the different categories of eligibility and the different ways that they've been doing it. So what they've been doing is trying to target the most high risk communities and then um, frontline essential workers. So what you see in front of you are the different um, individuals and category of workers that will be able to get vaccinated. Um, and then we will be able to um, roll it out in different phases and make sure that we're communicating. Um, but food service and restaurants are on the main grocery store and pharmacy workers, um, food banks and meal deliveries, et cetera. So we wanted to make sure um, that um, we um, are providing protection to our, um, our frontline workers. Um, the vaccine is free and there is no charge for the vaccine. And so one of the things that we've been seeing and we wanted to make sure that the public is aware that no one should ever be asking you for your social security number, um, bank account information or any financial documents. Um, so the vaccine is free. Um, regardless of insurance or underinsured. And so um, we do ask for insurance information at the time of an appointment just to make sure that we're covering administrative costs. However, uh, we will not turn anyone away if they do not have insurance coverage. Um, so um, understanding if your employees fall under um, the phase 1B is going to be critical. So what happens under the VAMS system, which is the Vaccine Administration Management System, is that you as an employer are able to, and you will be able to enroll into the VAMS system, which I'm going to show momentarily. And you will then be able to, um, this is the VAMS enrollment here, you will be able to then um, upload your employee's information. And so when you go to the VAMS enrollment site at the Department of Public Health, and we will share these slides after this presentation, um, so you'll be able to see it, um, you will then, the, they will tell you what it, who should be completing the form and who's eligible. So you'll see right now that they've already indicated who's eligible to complete this form. So you'll be able to upload the list um, and classify yourself as what type of business you are under these categories currently right now. You, this is what the VAMS form looks like. So you will enter your organization employer type so that they know what category you fall under. You put the organization name, your email address, et cetera. And then you will then continue with the, with the next screen. It's really just one page on the website where you will answer a D series of questions of who's the point of contact how do you, um, your email and your phone number so that you, they can be able to reach you. It then gets vetted into the system um, and you will be making a declaration. So I need to make a disclaimer that you will then in the same um, web portal, you will be indicating the Connecticut general testing that you are adhering to the Connecticut general statutes that everything in the portal that you're inputting is accurate to the best of your knowledge. And so, um, that's going to be, and then you just hit submit. Once you hit submit, it then gets vetted and then it will activate and send an email to your respective employees to then register to a vaccination site that's convenient to them. So when you're in the system, you'll get an invitation um, that you will be able to do that. There are options um, um, that um, individual employees, if they do not have um, access to an email once they get approved in the VAM system, they can certainly call the 211 or 877 um, um, number, nine, the number that's in front of you, 918-2224, um, to be able to then make their appointment. Um, Marisa, and so, yeah. I have a question. Okay. I already registered our organization, but wasn't prompted to include a list of eligible employees. Should I re-register? No, so do not re-register. So what happens is that because you're not currently eligible just yet, it will activate as soon as frontline essential. So as soon as the governor announces, we are now transitioning to frontline essential workers, you will then be released into the system. So you're right now sitting in the system like in a queue. And so thank you for registering your business. That's amazing. So that now you are sitting in the queue and it will release as soon as you're eligible. 
Is there a time uh, estimate for frontline essential workers? Yeah, so we are hoping um, that um, that uh, mid-March, um, late March, we will be activating um, um, activating frontline workers. So right now we are just about completing 75 and over, and then we're activating 65 to 74. That will be for a couple of weeks, and then we will transition right over to frontline essential workers. And so um, as the governor releases updates, um, then um, you know, as soon as the governor makes that announcement, your VAMS enrollment will activate as well. And so getting enrolled into the system now is gonna be very helpful for um, in identifying how you qualify so that then this way they already have you in the system. They will then send you an email and, and then you will be able to upload the list of your employees with their contact information. So asking your employees now for their email addresses, if you do not have their personal email addresses, their address, their phone number, their best um, way to contact their phone number is gonna be essential to collect that information now. So I have someone that registered their business on January 15th, and you may have already answered this, but never heard anything after that. How long will it take before I can upload my employee list? So yeah, I just answered that. Yeah, yep. and uh, we own more than one restaurant. Do I need to register all of them, or yes. should I bundle them together? You have to register each employer site separately. Okay. Uh, Unless the, it's the name, is it is it the same name of the businesses, but it's different businesses? That's actually. So if you're like a. Like if you're a Walgreens and you have five different locations, you could probably, obviously Walgreens is the vaccination site, but you would be able to um, upload a large list. But if it's different small businesses, I would recommend that you list each business separately because you have, you may have different tax ID numbers for your different businesses. Does Connecticut expect to have an appropriate supply by mid to late March of the vaccine? That's a really good question. So uh, all eligible one B, I imagine it's going to be a large block or are we anticipating a supply? That is a really good question. So when the federal government was transitioning between one administration to the next administration, there was definitely concerns about the distribution across the country. Um, we are the top four in the nation to be um, vaccinating at this time. So it's really good news. Um, and we've been, um, as, you, as you may or may not know, the, government, um, the new president Biden has created a special committee and has ensured that they're going to in, um, distribute vaccinations um, to the different states um, and make sure, and, and they're also um, other vaccine manufacturers that are, um, so Johnson & Johnson just submitted um, FDA um, emergency use authorization approval. And there are three additional manufacturers that are also in their last phases of clinical trials. So we're not only going to expect um, an increase of dosages from the federal government, we're also gonna have additional manufacturers available to vaccinate. Um, and so we are um, anticipating, um, and the reason why we are doing this phase in approach is to ensure that we have enough adequate supply as we move through the different phases and allow us to replenish from the state and then across Connecticut. The other great news is that when you activate into the VAM system, if you're willing, you do not have to get vaccinated in the city of New Haven. You will be able to get vaccinated anywhere that a site is available. So you, when, when you actually get into the system and you get approved and your employees get approved, you will then be asked how far you're willing to travel. And then a multitude of sites will show in the system. Um, many pharmacies, CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart pharmacy will be activating in the next week as well. So you, you will not have to rely on your um, a clinic provider, the hospital, or the health department. You get, the individuals, by the time you all get activated in the middle of March, towards the end of March, you will have a multitude of options and locations, which is really, actually really good news. Uh, can you choose which vaccine you want? That is um, not going to, that is typically not an option. 
um, different sites are providing one vaccine over the other. So for example, most pharmacies are just offering Pfizer vaccines um, and may get a, um, a percentage of Moderna vaccine. The, the, um, the health department, for example, we get, we get some Pfizer, um, but majority of the vaccines are Moderna vaccines. So um, you can try to make a request but oftentimes um, the VM system does not indicate what type of vaccine that particular max, um, that clinic site has on hand. Um, if I have an employee that is not a direct employee, but is a contracted employee, can I add them to my employee list? Yes, um, consultants and contracted employees um, can get added. It needs to be verified that they're indeed on the on some type of payroll. So just making sure that those consultants or contractors are indeed um, on site um, and are considered frontline essential workers. So if you have someone that's a contractor and they're never coming to your business, they should not be enrolled. These are for people that have the highest exposure to the public facing of your customer base. And companies with large groups of employees have the vaccine administered on site? Some are working with pharmacies like Amazon, for example, have certainly um, um, coordinated efforts for large scale companies. Yes, they have. If a business is reopening but not taking back all furloughed employees now, can they add them later as yep. they rehire them? Yep. Okay. And so one of the things that we wanna know is that um, the, um, to conclude some of the vaccination efforts, um, you're not considered um, protected until one to two weeks after the second dose, you're not considered fully vaccinated. And it's really critical that vaccine is not 100% effective. It's 94 to 95% effective. So we still have to follow the same safety precautions, wearing a mask, following the safety reopening um, measures, staying so, you know, proper social distancing, of avoiding crowds, making sure that there's proper social distancing in businesses, washing your hands often, having hand sanitizer um, on hands, and then mo most importantly, still following all of the CDC travel guidance. Um, getting a vaccination does not exempt you um, from um, still potentially contracting COVID. And so we wanna make sure that until we fully vaccinate, uh, many of the different models indicate that in order for us to build herd immunity, we need to vaccinate 60 to 70% of the population. And so we're not quite there yet. So um, just making sure that individuals understand. What's also good is that the VAM system will send you um, and your employees a second dose reminder so that you know you need to reschedule um, to, to schedule your second dose. When you set, schedule your second dose, you do wanna verify that you're getting the same manifest. So if you received Moderna, your second dose needs to be Moderna. If you receive Pfizer, your second dose must be Pfizer. So when you're scheduling your second dose, you really should be leaving the, the pharmacy or the health department or the hospital or the community health center, you should be leaving or university, you should be leaving with a date to return back to the same site as much as possible. So where um, the vaccines are given, will they tell you ahead of time which vaccine they're given what, so you can choose whether you want Moderna you or Pfizer? Yes, you can certainly contact that particular site and ask what vaccine they have on, on hand that particular um, scheduled day. You can certainly ask that question. So if contracted uh, employees are not on the payroll, but they bill independently, can, can they be included in the employee list? Only if they are um, frontline essential workers and have a high risk of exposure because of the customer base that are coming in. Um, what does the research say about being a Cartier of COVID once you have been fully vaccinated. What was the question again? What does the research say about being, I guess this is covered? Carrier probably. Oh, carrier of COVID? 
Oh, a carrier of COVID. Correct. Once that is vaccinated. So there's still a lot of scientific research that's happening. And that is why it's very critical that we still follow the necessary safety precautions. So being vaccinated does not mean that you get to not wear a mask and not still follow the necessary precautions. We have 150 employees. Would you recommend uh, to speak about, would you recommend speak with about the vaccine being administered on site? Hmm, not clear. Uh, so I think he's asking, uh, maybe I'm wrong, or he, he or she are asking that if they, uh, if they have that many employees, they, they wanna have an on-site vaccination clinic. Can you speak with, that was a yes. Okay, what so that would, need, that would need to be approved but at the state level. Um, we've, we've had firefighters of 350 employees, police department, you know, and they've all had to come to specific sites. So um, I, I do not know if 150 employees will be considered a large scale um, employer base because we certainly did not accommodate other entities with that level of number of employees. They've all, including healthcare entities, they've all had to uh, pick a clinic site. Thank and you. again, I would stagger your employees to ensure that it doesn't disrupt your day-to-day -day operations because especially the second dose, the side effects are indeed real. Mm -hmm. um, it does it depend on the individual, and um, uh, uh, but a lot of our employees, for example, at the health department, um, we all ultimately had side effects and it really hurt us because we still needed to run operations and being um, and having the side effects and trying to work through that. It's very difficult. Okay. And so this is where we are as a city of New Haven employee. Our chief, fire chief, um, um, was um, vaccinated. As you know, I don't know, my staff likes to put myself on a on PowerPoint slide, so I apologize about that. And then Dr. Jackson, who's a local pediatrician, also um, um, was vaccinated. So we try to highlight, um, we give out lapels to each of the people that come to the New Haven Health Department um, because we wanna make sure that individuals um, um, get their badge of honor um, and, and thank them for getting vaccinated because it, we're, getting, we're building herd immunity um, as we get vaccinated. And, um, and so uh, we were very happy that um, our Board of Health Direct, um, Board of Health, member and board of education member and, this, and our, our public safety um, and, um, staff um, was vaccinated. So we ask that you um, also consider getting vaccinated when it's your respective time in the field. Um, this is um, um, our, our, our poster that we'll be sending out on how you can um, get vaccinated. Um, and so we'll be sending this out as soon as um, you're eligible, um, making sure that an individuals have the necessary um, information. But this is the um, information where you can um, access the VAMS portal and the training materials available and how to um, go through the process. And then if you have a question, the Connecticut um, DPH has a, a help desk, um, has a help desk um, that um, you can be able to um, Query if you have any concerns, if, you, if, if there's a glitch and it's not letting you register your employees, et cetera, you can send them a help desk ticket and they will respond immediately to provide support to you. Um, so there are state resources available to help to submit um, requests for support. Um, and again, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to turn it over back to um, Kathy Graves and um, Gerald to, um, Garcia for um the remainder of this session. But if you have any, any additional questions, please feel free to ask. I'm opening a new restaurant with the, the expected date of opening, April 8th. I do not have employees yet. Once I get the employees on board, do I register again with VAMS? And how long will it take them to receive emails to sign up? Yeah, so you should not register again. If, um, I, um, this was an earlier question. So if you've already registered, you're in the queue and will be activated as soon as the governor approves frontline essential workers to get act um, to um, for the phase 1B rollout. And then you will then get an alert in your email indicating that you are eligible and that you should upload your employees roster. I do recommend that you maintain like an Excel spreadsheet with the employer's name, last name, address, 
city, zip code, uh, best, uh, uh, phone number, and an address, um, email address. So that this way, when you upload their information, they will get a direct email sent to them that they are able to then um, schedule their vaccination at their preferred site. Talk a little bit about New Haven. I know people are curious to know uh, the percentage of people in New Haven that have been vaccinated thus far. Um, right now, we have vaccinated 35% of our, our, of our 75 and, um, and over, phase 1A and 75 and over. So we've about, about vaccinated about 35% of the targeted group that we were trying to reach. Um, we are one of the top leading cities in New Haven um, with vaccination. So um, we are also working really hard on equity and access. So for example, for our 75 and over the group, we've actually created pop-up vaccination sites and we, we go out to senior housing residents and vaccinate the elderly at their residence um, sites. And so we've been working closely with the senior elderly housing facilities to making sure that access and also looking at equity from making sure that those that are um, in community members that are highest risk are vaccinated in a timely manner. Do you follow? Oh, wait. <clears throat> But this will be completely different restaurant. The one that the person that just asked about the new restaurant in April, it'll be a completely different restaurant than the one they've already uh, registered. So, should they register under a new name with the new employees as they are hired? Oh, as they are hired? Um, that's actually a good question. Um, I would need to verify. Um, how that would work because um, that has not been indicated um, to us yet. So that's actually a good question that I um, I will bring back and ask um, the VAMS uh, coordinator. Um, that is actually a good help ticket question. If you need a quicker response, you can actually email them as well and, and request to see if you're hiring new employees and are eligible, how do we then go about it? Because I do not think they want to have um, the same businesses registered multiple times. So last year, the electrical and construction was considered a central business last year. Uh, will construction businesses be included in the phase 1B rollout? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? The electrical and construction industry yep. was deemed a central business last year and things started shutting down, will construction businesses be included in the next phase 1B or is it included now? So the, the, the list of current eligible phase 1B um, for frontline workers are healthcare personnel, um, first responders, agricultural workers, including farm workers, food service, US Postal Service, manufacturing workers, grocery stores and pharmacy workers, public transit, food banks, education and child workers, solid waste and wastewater workers, inspectors working on site in the above locations and frontline public and social workers in government. So those are the current entities. So when you put in your, um, your business name, you would have to identify as one of those entities. What about uh, property management and maintenance staff who interact with residents and the public on a daily basis? If they're working now, if if they fall under um under one of the categories that I just listed, they can. Otherwise, they are not currently eligible. Okay. So they would have to fall under one of the categories that I just listed. And if you're if you go to ct.gov, the link that I'll share on the website, you can also see the list on the VAMS enrollment they'll have a list of the eligible um, sectors that are will be approved. Okay. When do you anticipate the vaccine being available for people uh, 16 and over or 18 and over? So, that's actually a, a good question. So the uh, the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine 
um, are definitely, um, that's a question that we get um, often. So like the Moderna vaccine is for 18 and over um, and the Pfizer vaccine um, for 16, I mean, sorry, Moderna vaccine is for 16 and over and the Pfizer vaccine is for 18 and over. Right now, there are no vaccines available to children. Okay, when will everyone be avail uh, eligible to get a vaccine? You think maybe by the summer? The general population is well hoping that by the summer, that's the goal, is that we get to the general population in the summer. And by then we'll have a, a, a multitude of sites because already as of next week, Walmart in New Haven, um, different Walgreens and CVSs will be activating. It's gonna uh, be almost like the flu vaccine. You'll be able to have access, you know, you. Target has not enrolled yet, but for example, like if you go to Target, you could get the flu shot, or if you go to CVS, you can get the flu shot. It's almost going to be a similar model. You know, there are a lot of myths out there about the, the vaccines, and that's where we see a lot of the communities of color avoiding it or saying they're not going to get it. Can you dispel some of those myths? Yeah, so those are the myths that I, I mentioned earlier um, about um, safety was a top priority. One of the things that's really critical to understand that coronavirus in general, it's not a new, um, it's, it's coronavirus, is, it's been in place and laboratories were already working on trying to develop vaccines against um, coronavirus. So when corona, the, the corona, COVID-19, the coronavirus 19 hit, um, hit our, um, our country and our, in, our, in the world, um, the laboratories were then able to scale up and work um, a lot faster where, because they were already a step ahead, already working on trying to build antibodies against fighting um, coronavirus in general. And so that, that was one of the things that um, comes up often is why did this vaccine get um, developed so quickly and were able to, is because these particular two companies were already working on this in the laboratory. And so it, it really benefited us as a, as a whole, as a society, because then we were able to get um, emergency use authorization. Um, one of the things that um, I indicated earlier is that the vaccine will not give you COVID-19 virus. Um, so that's other, another myth that um, is out there. Um, in addition, the vaccine will not cause you to test positive. Um, it's, it's, it's not a live vaccine. It's a, it's a vaccine that provides protective antibodies um, and spike proteins, but it does not um, cause you to test positive. It's not a live vaccine at all. Um, and, and again, we ask individuals that have pre-existing conditions to consult with the providers um, because we do know that the risks are great when someone um, has a pre-existing condition um, and contracts COVID. Um, it can lead to fatalities. And so the vaccine has proven to be effective um, and has efficacy based on the current clinical trial um, research that is out there um, that, that provides 94 to 95 protective factors, including the new variant B117 that has been identified in our country and in our state. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Marissa, will you just review when the VAM system will be available? for all these employers to upload their employee information and when it'll be transferred and the, e the employees will get emails, just kind of a review of that. So when it, people- So again, as we wrap up that, the, the question, um, right now we are wrapping up, next week will be focused on 75 and over all of next week. And the following week, we will be activating 65 to 74 um, community members. If you have an employee that falls into that category, they do not have to wait until they get approved by an employer. They can just schedule on their own as an individual um, and be able to enroll into getting um, vaccinated. However, employers can upload their list now, identify as one of the entities and sectors that are approved under phase 1B and will be able to then get activated, um, hopefully, we are anticipating mid-March, end of March. And so that is really is going to anticipate the rollout on how we are successful in vaccinating those that are 65 to 74 year olds. I'm making sure that um, access and equity are at the forefront. Um, and then we will then activate. This will also allow enough sufficient time to replenish vaccines um, in our state. 
Okay, two more questions. Uh, number one, is there an underlying illness that would preclude someone from um, taking the vaccine? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Are there any underlying illnesses that would preclude someone from taking the vaccine? That, that is certainly something that will need to be discussed with the uh, with your um, your medical provider. So if someone has a pre-existing condition, depending on um, their level of illness and if they're actively in some level of treatment um, um, that can give a vaccine um, uh, a event, or if they've had prior history of uh, severe reactions to vaccination, it would be something that needs to be consulted with your provider before getting vaccinated. And do veterinarians fall in phase 1B? Um, they are currently not, um, specific veterans are not um, uh, singled out under phase 1B. Um, however, if they have, if they fall into the age category or into the sector category, they can certainly be enrolled in that way. And that's for veterinarians. Oh, better. Oh, sorry. I thought he said veterans. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> they, they are not currently listed under phase 1B. Interesting. But I can find out. Okay. Are there any more questions? Well, just know that the Small Business Resource Center is available. Uh, you can reach out to us anytime and we can, we'll reach out to Maritza and uh, we can ask all your questions or get them answered. Another, just one more thing that's gonna happen soon and Jerry can talk about that a little bit. So we also have a Goldman Sachs program for small businesses. Jerry? Sure, we've, we've developed a phenomenal partnership with Goldman Sachs and their 10,000 Small Businesses Program, which is an executive MBA-like program offered for free to existing businesses that are doing $75,000 in revenue and have at least one employee in addition to the founder themselves. A number of local businesses have participated in the program with great success. And as a lot of people are looking to skill up uh, and, and prepare for recovery, this could be an ideal uh, time for you, business owners like you, uh, to consider uh, enrolling in, in this kind of program. Uh, we'll be sending out to this list uh, information on that soon. Uh, we're doing an introductory program on February 24th at noon, uh, which, which will uh, be reflected in that, in that email. Thank you so much for joining us today. Everyone stay safe and stay warm. Thank you.